Okay, thanks a lot, Jude. Thanks very much. Um, I'm very sorry that um, for some people um, justice costs money and uh, that appeal mechanisms are considered uh, too burdensome when, in fact, that's absolutely crucial if you look at the evidence from ISDS and from all of uh, the, the evidence which has been put before us. I think what I really welcome with this paper is that finally there's recognition that there are real problems uh, that need to be resolved and therefore the accusations which have been levelled at uh, some about scaremongering are actually unfair at the very least. Um, I think that there are steps in the right direction and I'd like to echo what David said that um, you're clearly listening to the concerns which are, are being expressed but I think there are, there are some elements where um, we haven't responded to the concern in a sense and I wonder overall, I, I tend to agree with um, something said by the EPP shadow, that lots of the proposals will be a long way down the line and maybe we need interim um, measures. And there are two ways that we could start to do interim uh, measures. The first is ISDS isn't necessary if the US uses domestic implementing measures. They've used it for other international commitments. Um, other UN uh, conventions and elsewhere to integrate international commitments into their domestic law, which would then allow domestic courts um, to deal with legitimate investor rights and investment protection. I don't understand why that hasn't been given more attention by um, the Commission. The second is that if we were heading towards an international court and heading towards this, this long-term ambition, then some of the steps in the paper could have been heading in that direction as well, like mandatory use of the unit trial um, rules. That's not in. It's still um, uh, not compulsory. So we're sending mixed messages that there's something at the end of the pipeline without any timetable, any frame of how we're going to arrive there, without lots of the steps which would be needed to, to get to it. And finally, um, and it reflects a little bit the concerns of, of others, um, the implication of the paper is that the right to regulate isn't properly um, uh, respected in terms of uh, um, bilateral and investment treaties and the investment treaties or the investment chapters in CETA and Singapore. So what's the implication of that? Um, wouldn't it be a dereliction of duty on your behalf to put something before the European Parliament that you've already said elsewhere is flawed in terms of the protection that it offers? And will you be going back to those governments and reflecting the new reality with them? Um, it would be interesting to have your view on that. <laughs>